Factors Affecting Technology Uses in Schools, an Ecological Perspective, by Yang Zhao and Kenneth A. Frank. The American Educational Research Journal, Winter 2003, Volume 40, Number 4, pages 807 to 840. About the zebra mussel. The zebra mussel was first seen in Lake St. Clair in 1988 and spread to all the Great Lakes by 1990. Its introduction caused disruption to fish communities in the Great Lakes. You may well ask, how are zebra mussels and technology uses in schools related? Well, Zhao and Frank metaphorically classify both the zebra mussel and computers in schools as alien species introduced into a new environment. To fully understand this metaphor, we need to understand some terms. The first key term is ecosystem. An ecosystem is complete with all the necessary components for function and survival over the long term. For the zebra mussel, the Great Lakes is the ecosystem. For technology uses in schools, schools are the ecosystem. Ecosystems have biotic and abiotic communities. The abiotic components are the inorganic or non-living components. This would be rocks, water, and the like for the Great Lakes ecosystem. While for the school ecosystem, this includes buildings and the grounds. The biotic components are the living parts of the ecosystem. Each species also has a role or a niche to play in the ecosystem. Biotic species can be subcategorized as dominant species species that do not vary much in type but have large numbers. Keystone species, species that are not dominant but they are very important to the ecosystem's continuation. Invasive species, species that are not native to an ecosystem. In the Zhao and Frank analogy, the keystone species are teachers and the invasive species are computer uses. Though computer uses are not biotic in nature, since they evolve in a similar manner to living species, that is, where diversity leads to the development of superior species and discarding inferior models, they are considered biotic for the analogy. Living organisms and species must have a place to live or a habitat. In the zebra mussel example, zebra mussels live on rocks or ship hulls usually at the bottom of the lake. This is therefore their habitat. For schools, students, teachers, and administrators occupy the school building for the better part of the school day. This can therefore be considered their habitat. Let's review in the analogy. The educational system is considered the ecosystem, the system in which individual species exist, usually in an ordered or hierarchical fashion. In this ecosystem, the keystone species that is the species that are not dominant but important to the ecosystem's continued existence, are teachers, and the invasive species, the species that are not native to the system, is computer uses. Let's take a closer look at the invasive species. The invasive species in this metaphor has two main subforms, computer uses for teachers and computer uses for students. Computer uses for teachers mostly benefit the teacher only such as a computerized mark book which allows the teacher to record student attendance and marks. Computer uses for students tend to benefit not only the student but the school ecosystem as a whole. Invasive species when introduced into a new ecosystem have three main options. Take over as the dominant species, survive and live with the dominant species, or just plain die. Survival of any species depends on two sets of factors. One, individual qualities that allow it to survive, and two, how the species interacts with the environment in which it exists. Created using Powtoon.